Thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of Why We Grow. And today we had the great opportunity to speak with Jennifer and she is the creator of the Seating Square. If you have not heard of the Seating Square, you definitely need to check it out because it is a super awesome tool that we use every day in our garden. I absolutely love it. The kids love it. It's amazing. So this was really fun to sit down and talk with her about how she came up with the Seating Square and how she got it going. It was a really interesting talk and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to it. Oh, me too. It's so exciting to get to talk with you more because, I mean, we use the seating square all the time and absolutely love it. So I'm really excited to hear more about it and your background and what led to making this. Well, I am always happy to share the seating square story. <laughs> Super bug that I am. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so how did the seating square come to be? How did you come so, up with the idea? Seating square. Well, it it all kind of it was a, a kind of an invention invention of necessity. So, my husband and I had wanted to have our own vegetable gardens so that our kids could have that experience growing up as as we had had. Um, and so, the first year we put in a garden, it was in our backyard, and we just kind of took out a bunch of lawn and put in a garden and threw in a bunch of seeds, and up came all the little green seedlings and it was very exciting and then we quickly realized that you know maybe being able to identify weed versus seedling wasn't as easy as we had hoped it would be um did our best but ended up kind of getting a lot more weeds that first year than we had hoped so <laughs> year number two we're like all right we learned so when we went to the store and we said okay we would like the tool, please. We don't know what it is, but it's going to space out our seedlings and make weeds easy to identify. And it's just going to make planting the garden easy. So we would, we would take one, please. And the guy says, oh, gee, that sounds really cool. It doesn't exist. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, all right, well, off we go then. So uh, we'll go to the almighty internet and see what see what's out there. So uh, we came across two things that kind of uh, piqued our interest. So first was um, square foot gardening. And so if that was a way of like really maximizing your space where you put X number of seeds per square foot and you get, you know, maximum yield and minimal weeds. And we thought, oh, that sounds really, you know, on point. That's what we're looking for we didn't have a large garden it was actually quite quite small uh so um but the problem with square foot gardening is that uh the the setup is that they want garden boxes and then you put a grid um over top of the garden boxes in st using sticks or strings and then you plant in each square foot increment accordingly mm -hmm. uh but we didn't have the boxes we kind of had this weirdly shaped kind of garden that we created for ourselves so we went okay well you know Put a put a pin in that one and and uh, off we continued our hunt and then we found um, someone had made this giant pegboard. Uh, it was about a meter by a meter or uh, three feet by three feet, depending on your country. And uh, so it was this giant pegboard. So you just laid it down on the soil and you jump on it and lift it up and then it leaves kind of little divots in the soil for you to put your seeds. So we said, well, that's pretty cool, but it's giant and not you know a little cumbersome um kind of combine the two so we made all these little jigs of the one foot uh square foot uh spacing techniques of square foot gardening with kind of this pegboard kind of approach and uh, the garden you see behind me was actually the very first garden that we planted with seating square so it's oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it uh, looks amazing too that was your first time that was our first time. I mean, talk about easy to spot the weeds because everything is like laser beam precision. Yeah. Um, so if there's a weed that shows up, well, you just you spot it, you yank it and off you go. So, uh, and then as your plants get larger, they actually crowd out the weeds because there's just no space for them because you've utilized your space so thoroughly. Yeah. Uh, so we ended up kind of, uh, it was, they were really quite bulky. So we took out the pegs and we put holes in it so that uh, you could poke through the holes and color coded all, all into one unit and voila, the rest is history. So here, <laughs> so let's see if my computer will let me play and show this here, but this here is a seating square. It's a color coded seed spacer. It's one square foot and uh, yeah, all the spacing needs you could want for anything from carrots to pumpkins is on there. It's yeah. 
Oh, that's amazing. I love that story. Our, our kids absolutely love the seating square. Oh. They, yeah, they use it all the time. And I, ever since we first started gardening and we discovered the seating square, we, we were very excited when we found it too, by the way, <laughs> but our kids loved it. Even when they were toddlers, we'd be out there with them, like talking about the different colors and, and I'd be like, okay, put a seed in each of, you know, this color hole and this color hole. And it, I, I feel like it, um, like it taught them counting and colors and all of that. Yeah, but it's, really did. Yeah, I, it's amazing. <laughs> actually used to be a primary school teacher <laughs> yeah really so even though seating square it's made for all ages all experience levels um I really did want to bring in uh kind of make, make it so that it was kid friendly because uh -huh. way back when I was a school teacher it actually I was teaching about seeds and sun and you know how how it all works and and this one little guy, he says, oh, I was, I was Miss Lane back then. So he puts up his hands. He says, Miss Lane, carrots don't come from the ground. They come from the grocery store. Everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you, you are, <laughs> you're right. They do come from the grocery store. But before that, <laughs> brown. <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing and, how many kids think that. Yes. Yes. So it, it really kind of you know, that stuck with me. And, you know, so years later when I, you know, have my own kids and I want, I wanted to have them to have that experience of growing food. And then, you know, when we came up with this was, it was kind of a, well, we could give this experience to the children of the world. So yeah, uh, it was really exciting to be able to, to make it so kid friendly and, you know, then they can learn other aspects, learning their colors and their spacing. And it, they just, it, it, brought more to the table on for, for the little ones as well. So that was really exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so when did you first start gardening? Oh, I think our very first year, I think it was 2013. So okay. it, yeah, we <laughs> like the years kind of keep coming and yeah, <laughs> we're, we're nine, nine years along now. So that, uh, oh. Uh, I, I have definitely planted a few gardens with this little baby. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened in 2013 to make you decide that you wanted to start doing that? Uh, well, we, so we, you know, we had the kids and, and we had had, uh, we had some little garden boxes, but we, you know, weren't sure if they were quite going to cut it for what we wanted to try and take on. So uh, luckily at that point, we had a really um, awesome landlord and and he was fine with us digging up his backyard and, <laughs> and putting in a little garden. So, cause we, we really wanted that experience for the kids. Cause Carl and I had grown up in houses where, you know, we had a huge backyard gardens and it was awesome. You run in there with your bare feet and you're raiding the peas and the carrots and the strawberries. And like, it would just, the joy of raiding the garden was just we both yes. and we both had that memory so we we really wanted our kids to have it as well so that was kind of what prompted that initial garden that's awesome so what was the first things that you that you guys started with oh okay so behind here so we've got some carrots and we've got uh lettuce and spinach and we we kind of did a little medley of just all our favorites um I think we did some radishes and peas and just you know all all the things that were kind of uh, because it was a smaller space so we were kind of keeping more to the smaller vegetables and and so just you know some the, the family favorites that that we did and uh I I remember um quite enjoying the the radishes were the first to come up because radishes I don't know what it is about those radishes but they they come for like a shot so so those yeah, radishes, so I mean, they do right they just cruise in there so but it was really neat because um you could see um because of that laser beam precision you can see the seedling trying to pop up before it even emerges you can start seeing the soil starting to lift so you were watching it growing before it was even breaking surface and yeah. it was just it was the neatest thing and I, it's always actually still my favorite point part. It's just watching those little bumps of soil as you know the little seedlings are working to get their so, themselves up there. So uh, <laughs> a lot of fun. So the kids really love it that first year. Oh yes, yeah, they were all over it. Lots, lots of pictures with the kids in the seeds <laughs> there in their garden. How did you get them excited about it? 
oh, well, you know, just that we were going to grow our own food and that they could, they were going to be farmers and they were going to get to pick their own food and grow their own food and, and how, how much tastier vegetable gardens are. And these kids, like the ownership that they took over it, like, you know, trying to get your kids to eat vegetables, not always the easiest yes things to do wow like it was a done deal like that my my youngest she was out there every morning bare feet she just picking away and coming <laughs> in full like this is gonna be for breakfast and lunch oh, <laughs> good job kid <laughs> oh that's so great that's awesome oh what are their favorite things to grow um i would say the the peas and the carrots and the strawberries are just always fan favorite you know i feel like the the strawberries are always everybody all all the kids favorites yes yes they're just so sweet well they can mm, yeah they're nothing beats a garden grown strawberry like i know yes so juicy and just mm, you you know what i'm talking about (laughs) oh yes absolutely it it feels like it it was wrapped in sugar all right you don't even have to like do any oh it's so amazing (laughs) See, and then, and then when, you know, so we got the kid favorites and then, you know, you throw them like, well, I, I'm always about the garden salad. Like basically as soon as I can be living off the olives all summer, that's, that's my MO. So it's all about, you know, the kale and the spinach and all the different kinds of lettuce and, and you get the green onions in there, you know, just, it's, it's a little grocery shop right in your backyard. Like it's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I've, as the economy is, going through what it's going through of, of the times where we're really finding that a lot of people are turning to gardening as as an approach to be able to you know deal with that grocery bill that just keeps climbing so um you know it's it's a fun hobby it you know it, for, for those that are you know wanting to kind of still have some space from in the pandemic world it's it's a nice at-home hobby that you can do on your own with your kids and you know it does help supplement that grocery bill so um it's it's really a lot of people are finding it helpful on on many levels so absolutely um, yeah it's it's, it's great to have created something that's helping so many (laughs) well that's so wonderful so you you create it what did you create it that first year in 2013 also the well, we, it, we had um it took us a couple years to get from kind of our wooden prototypes to we had to you know get pad files made yeah. and, and then we had to get them uh like this steel mold made and you know sample of 3d printed pieces like there was there was definitely a lot of steps along the way yeah. um and so it, it was it was one heck of a learning experience and oh, yeah, still, seriously we learn new things every day <laughs> whether it's how to run a business or how to plant a garden there's always <laughs> something new to learn <laughs> uh but we did um a crowdfunding campaign on kickstarter uh trying to you know uh raise the funds to get our molds made and have our patents made and and uh so yeah we we jumped through all those hoops and and we did it all and it i'd say it took us a good two years uh, to, from when we were, you know, creating our first wooden templates to when we had actual product in hand. And that first season, uh, we, we just, you know, trial run, we ordered 2,500 units and, and, uh, they, I think they sold within probably the first three or four months and we're like, wow. The, so did just, you sell them all locally or what did you do first? Uh, that, that first year I, uh, did a lot of local trade shows cause you know, no, nobody's okay. yeah. it's brand new on the market and, and it's a new product to boot. So, you know, it's not like, you know, I have to educate people as to what it is and what it can do for them. It, yeah. You look at it and you, a lot of people assume it's a board game. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. I could definitely see that. But I'd actually considered turning it into like a little side that you could use it as a board game to learn about gardening, but uh, yeah. you, know, you got to pick your battles. It never, that one never quite came to fruition, but it, Hey, you never know. <laughs> it, it could happen one of these days. That's uh, but yeah, so that first year, first couple of years, um, we did a lot of trade shows, just trying to get our name out there. Um, I got it onto Amazon and uh, actually Amazon, this I think it was a couple of years ago now, they actually did a video, um, a, an Amazon seller video uh, with with the myself and seating square. So that was, that was pretty crazy. That's that was. Cool. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, so if you go on the seller, the Amazon uh, website, seller videos, I'm, I actually 
actually in there. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. cool. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you're up in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, so we're, we're just outside of Vancouver. So, oh, love, love living here. It's a beautiful place to live. <laughs> that's awesome. So um, if I remember right, you were on the Canadian Shark Tank. Yes. Yes, we're right. Yep. Yep. So in Canada, it's called Dragon's Den. Okay. Um, yep. Same, same thing. You got a bunch of dragons slash sharks up there and you okay. go and <laughs> quake you name your boots and you're telling them about, about your thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I did it and I loved it and they fought over it. it was, <laughs> That's awesome. That was quite the experience. So uh, definitely a, a feather for the cap on that one. But, uh, <laughs> I think at that point we'd, uh, we'd only sold about 16... 16,000 squares which they were actually really quite impressed with so um you know so I would that, be too yeah that's really good yeah so it, that was about five I want to say about five years ago that I did that so we've we've sold more since then so um actually I I did some quick math and it was at the beginning of this past season so we a whole lot more gardens have been planted since then but at the beginning of the gardening season for for 22 um I Kind of did some math and I figured we had grown with the seeding squares that were out in the world we had grown over 17 tons of fresh organic vegetables uh that the world had That's grown and eaten and loved wow. so, uh I and this past year was a pretty good year so I think that that number is probably substantially larger by now but uh, yeah, that's a lot of vegetables. <laughs> yes, it is. That's amazing. That's definitely something to be proud of. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that seating square is making a huge impact on everybody. It just makes everything so much simpler too. I know for us, whenever we discovered it, like it just, it makes our garden look better. I mean, you can see with the background of, of you, like it just looks super organized and it looks great. Yeah, it, <laughs> it just, it, it gets your garden in a nice and easy. It's really quick. Yeah. And it's, it's so in, all the anxiety of, oh, how do I do this? You know, that's all gone. It's all nice. Nice. Here, let me grab my, you just have this little color coded chart here. So you just look up at what type of, type of vegetable you want to plant, uh, see which colored box it's in. And then that's the color of hole you poke and seed on the seeding square. Oh, so that's so great. really easy to get it in. And then, you know, as I said, E spotting the weeds is easy. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, really try and analyze every little green plant you have. You just pull out the ones that are out of space. Yeah. As your plants get bigger, you don't need to be weeding because they just, there's no room for them. And then additionally, it actually saves on your water bill uh, for your garden because uh, in not having all the exposed soil um the, the the plant canopy uh covers kind of covers the soil, you have less water evaporation. So it actually, yeah, you, you don't need as much water for your garden when you you garden with this approach too. So uh, a lot of benefits for, yeah. for planting with a, a seeding Absolutely. square for sure. So do you still use it in your garden? Oh, you better believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I've got my trusty one. Mine is pretty beat up, but I love it. It's like one of the original ones. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. We, we love ours. We use it all the time. And we got a second one too, because we had to make sure that we always had one for everybody to be able to use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, definitely. When you get the kids going in there often, you mean really, unless you have a large garden, you really only need one square, but if you've got the little ones, they do appreciate having their own for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. And I have no complaints about that, of course. <laughs> so do you follow all of the square foot gardening methods? Like, do you use Mel's mix for soil or do you use something different? Uh, I don't use Mel's mix. Um, I, I just, I kind of tend to be a little bit more helter skelter with, with the, um, the soil that I put in, I'll just kind of stir in whatever suits. I, I kind of, I do a, a test, um, on the, um, the, the nutrients in the soil, and then I'll just kind of add stuff accordingly. Um, I have, ironically, I have since moved to a house that does have garden boxes and I could do the, the, the formal square foot gardening method, but I really do like using my seating squares. <laughs> we stick with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, we, we do a lot of Mel's mix and, and we have seating, seating square right on top and yep. Works out really well. 
that's awesome. I love the pictures. I am always snooping your guys' pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you guys look like you have a lot of fun gardening and taking care oh, of absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And the, the kids have so much fun out there. And I love it. Like the the younger ones have really just grown up out and around all of the green gardening and yeah. And seating square, of course. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When we were doing homeschool, I we were out in the garden a lot and mm -hmm. like during COVID when everybody was at home and uh, that seating square definitely helped because mm -hmm. we could go through and do counting and all of that. And yeah, yeah. you can do a lot yeah, of things your colors and lining things up and yes mm -hmm. yes absolutely so what what ages were your kids whenever you made this oh okay so let's do some math here okay so the <laughs> <laughs> were they still young enough to use yeah. it like that yeah Alyssa was eight I think she was about eight and Ethan would have been about 11 okay um, yeah so they were just kind of right in that age where I mean I've had toddlers literal like Di diapers on and they're sitting there holding that stick and they're poking those colors so you, you know the the real obviously you should have parental supervision when yeah. they're, they're that <laughs> small uh but you know there's the age limit and and I've had right up to I had this one lady she emailed me she says I am 102 and I use your seating square and it's wonderful so so it really I've, I've had from two-year-old to 102 so I, I've had the whole range of people uh, using and loving it so uh, yeah so Ethan and Alyssa were eight and 11 and yeah they were they were in there like a dirty shirt it was great you should change it to two months because our two-month-olds I, I feel like she would love it she <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so yeah you're a little to 100. Stick. she'll be on it oh that's awesome uh, oh. so you said you grew up when you were uh younger growing food and all that too mm -hmm. awesome. yes so um yeah my my we, I grew up in northern Alberta uh so growing season wasn't quite as long as it might be down down south for for you guys but yeah, uh way different I, than here in Oklahoma Oh yes, yeah, you bet. So I, my uh, my mom, man, did she have a green thumb? And she she uses my seating square, and she's uh, she she's actually she had the master gardener. She did a tour of her garden uh, probably about a month ago, and the master gardeners all came in, and she was showing them seating square and how her approach. And oh, so and she she she's recruiting. For me. <laughs> That's so great. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So when when is your last frost date or first frost date whenever up there? Oh, oh, that is a good question. I hopefully not for a while yet. Okay, um, I'm not. I'm not actually sure. We haven't had it yet. Um, but keeping in mind, I am in Vancouver's Lower Mainland, so yeah. uh, that's kind of that nice little small climate of of uh, warmer. Uh, that what zone is it? Just, I'm sorry. What zone is it? I believe I'm kind of depending on how close you are to sea level. I believe I'm six A. Oh, um, okay, that's a lot different than I thought. Okay, yeah. So versus my my mom in Alberta, she's three A, I believe. Ooh. So yeah, so there's definitely a range. So, uh, so you grew up gardening in three A then? Yeah, you know it might have even been less because we were wow. up, up even north of that. So. You see, to me, that just seems so foreign because um, I haven't ever, yeah, I mean, I'm in zone seven. Like we have like a pretty, pretty long growing season. Mm -hmm. That just seems so extreme. How how did it go up there? Like what? Oh, well, she, she's planting seedlings and, and having like her office is all these planting grow lights and that's January. So uh -huh. <laughs> Gardening season started in my, when I grew up, gardening season started in January in the house with all the, just those little ceilings all over the place. And, and so, you know, you, and she'd blow, have the fan blowing on them so that they were, you know, yeah. getting, having, being strengthened. And, and so she'd go in and show us all the different ones that we would be growing this year. And we kind of get to pick which ones were our favorites and which ones were we going to get to plant. And oh, fun. Um, it was an amazing experience. She was, she was a, a really, she, she planted that seed, if you will, uh, <laughs> for, for me to be a future gardener. Wow. That's so great. Yeah. Um, so does she grow in like hoop houses or anything like that? Like so she has, she has a greenhouse and she has a garden. 
Um, and she, the amount, and she actually, she grows and donates to the local food bank. Oh, so amazing. she, yes, she, she's, she's an amazing person. <laughs> so that <laughs> so she, she produces a lot of vegetables from a small space. I mean, she was doing it before seating square, but now that she has seating square and she, she optimizes her space even more, like she just, she cruises. So she, I mean, she's got all sorts of different approaches. She has, you know, uh, potato uh, bins that she grows up. They're indeterminate potato bins. So they just keep growing up and she keeps adding soil. And then she's got some boxes that she, she uses the seating square spacing for. And then she's got, um, she has all the com companion planting approach. So she'll have like the, the three sisters approach where you have your, your squash and your corn and your, beans I believe and so she kind of has all those weaving up and together and and just her garden is a, it's a magical place I love going because <laughs> <Every time, laughs> she lives still lives in Alberta and I live in BC so when I go over it's the first thing we're like all right let's go check out the garden I got my camera let's go <laughs> <laughs> oh that's wonderful I love that <laughs> so any tips for growing in uh, colder conditions um so there's oh she oh you know what she has the um she takes the milk jugs and okay. she'll cut off the bottom and then she'll kind of put milk jugs over um like her peppers or you know kind of individual little plants and it's the little they're like little mini greenhouses themselves so yeah. uh, so that's that's an approach she does obviously the greenhouse she 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 runs a heater in her greenhouse to keep it nice and warm yeah. <laughs> my father's annoyance but hey this is thing, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and she just she's really very you know aware and watchful of you know with the frost and she puts blankets over things when the the frost is coming and and um yes I feel very fortunate that I live in the climate that I do that yes that's, that's not the concern that I have to take on but she she is on it that's Definitely. great that's yeah. great so how how warm does it get there in the summer? Um. Okay. Oh, I don't know what the or I just from. Okay. So, uh, uh, Celsius it gets to about thirty degrees, but I actually don't know what the conversion is over to Fahrenheit. Um, but it's 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 a nice warm summer day. Okay. It can get quite quite toasty. Um. But it's the winter. That's what I want to get you the winter time. Really, really cold. Um, that's where it gets can get quite cold uh kind of it can get down to minus 30 to minus 35 and again Ooh. that's celsius so i'm not sure what that is in fahrenheit i don't maybe you can have like a little across the screen like uh, yeah i know we'll have to like calculate it <laughs> it sounds really cold <laughs> it's cold let me tell you it's really cold <laughs> oh man so uh do they have problems with mosquitoes ticks like things like that too um mosquitoes yeah you know anywhere in canada mosquitoes are a thing um yeah. ticks you know ticks are something that i personally didn't ever really encounter in alberta i'm not saying that they're not there but it wasn't something that i encountered i am yeah. more so in in bc that the ticks are something that i've come across um yeah we this current house that we just we moved into uh the beginning of it would have been last may and so we had moved here and it, so it hadn't had anyone living in it for a few months mm -hmm. and bc bc is a rainforest um uh, or sorry lower mainland is it's a it's a, a, a wet rainforest or oh, I can't remember there's a term for the type of rainforest it is but okay. basically everything grows like stink out here uh so we had and then there's in the back there's um uh bam a bamboo kind of area and the bamboo had just kind of spread out all through the grass and the grass was all about three feet high with probably a couple hundred bamboo shoots throughout and and uh, so I had to go in and first I had to dig out all the bamboo shoots so that we could take the lawnmower in and, and clear out this back area. And yes, I discovered that there were ticks back there and that, that, that needed to be, that, that did need to get fixed. So we, we, we did get the lawn back to, uh, to uh, yeah. a manicured approach, but um, That's then we went and planted a bunch of wildflowers all around it because we still wanted to be bee friendly. So, uh, so, but yes, ticks. You got to watch out for those guys. They're That's interesting <laughs> how, how similar it sounds like it is up there versus down South. Like mm -hmm. that's very interesting. 
Well, and, and that's the thing, like, uh, as I talk about Vancouver, they, it is just this, this tiny little, little area <laughs> just between the mountains and the, the ocean and just, just this one little, it's kind of this little microclimate and the rest of Alberta or the rest of Canada, they, they get the cold. For sure. Well, it sounds like you are very lucky then to live where yes. you live. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I awesome. am. Yes, I am. But I, I do, I do go back to the other side of the mountains uh, in the summer and in winter rather. I do enjoy skiing. So not that there's not skiing here, but I could like go skiing with my family over there. So yeah, uh, I do enjoy my winter sports too. <laughs> <laughs> so is there any advice that you would give to new growers or people looking to get started? Just, uh, you know, be brave, give it a try. Um, even if you're like us in that first year where you just yeah, just put it all in and you get a lot of weeds. You're also going to get a lot of vegetables and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, or you go ahead and get the seating square and get yourself that perfect garden right off the hop. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you know what? Gar gardening is a lot of fun. There's, there's so many health benefits to it, both mentally and physically. It, it gets you outside. It gets you with that healthy food. You know, what's going on your table. You know, that the, the chemicals and the, the pesticides haven't been applied to it. You know, you, you save on the grocery bill. You, you get that, that hobby, that at home hobby, that sense of accomplishment you know you can teach your kids you get like just there's there's so many good things that come about oh and it's like it's its own workout too uh it just so much good comes from gardening uh whether it's with a seating square or not so if you've never tried gardening I just say even just go just go get you know a, a small box garden box and just give it a try because it is it is truly a, a rewarding experience Yes, I absolutely agree. And mm -hmm. I do highly recommend the seating square. And yeah. if, if anybody out there hasn't tried it, they definitely need to. It is awesome. Um, we have yeah. them in our app also. Mm -hmm. So make sure. Excellent. Yes, that's where you yep. should go get them. <laughs> go check them out. <laughs> um, so where do people go to follow you? Um, what social medias are you on? Okay. So uh, you can go on to Facebook, Instagram, uh, I am on, uh, YouTube and I do for LinkedIn people. I am on LinkedIn as well. Uh, so those, those are kind of Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube are, are the main ones. Uh, the handle is seating square, seating square or the seating square on Facebook, uh, and then seating square on Instagram and YouTube. Awesome. Well, yeah. great. So one last question. <laughs> Do you have any advice for people that want to go about creating a, any sort of gardening products? Oh, you know what? If, uh, if, if you want to go about doing it, you know, j just try kind of work through the, the process of like, you know, figure out what works for you. What, what are you looking for in a product? Kind of keep in mind that, um, there, there are a lot of steps to it and it's not an inexpensive experience. So if, you know, uh, I do, I, and I speak from, from my experience, like manufacturing a, a plastic product. So, um, I guess it would kind of depend on what it is that you're wanting to make, but, um, you know, follow your dreams. Like if you've got something and it makes your gardening experience better, check it out, see what you can do. Um, call a, you know, you can do, you can do the crowdfunding, uh, to, if you need to get molds made, uh, if you are wanting a patent, uh, from, I speak from personal experience on this, the patent has been incredibly helpful, uh, a few years down the line as, uh, seating square has gotten more popular. Uh, so the, the patent, uh, again, a bit, a bit of legwork and a few dollars, but well worth it. Um, and uh, so for, for us, we, we have a local manufacturer that um, outsources. So uh, for us, it's nice that we have someone de just down the road that we can go and, you know, have those conversations and discuss things. Um, uh, so uh, I guess if anyone's wanting a, a Vancouver uh, connection, they can reach out. I'm happy to, to send the name of my guys. They're, they're fantastic. Uh, actually, I just have to do a little shout out to them. So precision injection molding, they were they were so helpful when we showed up with our wooden prototypes and they're like, yeah, you know what, we're going to make this work for you. And they really worked well with us and, and worked hard.
hard for us to, to, to get it to, to an actual product. So um, just know that it's not instantaneous. It's not going to be like, oh, two weeks and it's going to be, uh, <laughs> no, it, it, it does take time. Um, and it's something that uh, it's, it's like, you know, it's climbing a mountain. Like you, you're not going to get to the top until, unless you keep taking the steps. So um, it, it's something that it, it does take the, the ongoing persistence, uh, but uh, well worth it when you get there. And um, you know, and that's the thing too, is if, if you have something that helps you and you can go and help others, well, that's, that nothing beats it. That's, that's an amazing thing. So, uh, so I just, anyone that wants to, I, I cheer you on, do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it is so inspiring to hear your story and everything that you have done to help so many people start growing their own food and being successful in the garden. It's, it's amazing. We love following, following your story and seeing everything that you're doing. Yeah. Wow. It's really great. Well, thank you, Carrie. I, I also very much enjoy following you guys and seeing what you're up to. I wish I had all the critters that you do. They look like so much fun. <laughs> oh, they definitely are. Yes, absolutely. And everybody does their little bit to help with the garden, whether it's providing compost or, you know, helping clear out our gardens at the end of the season. Yep. You betcha. Or picking and eating. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, all of the art animals are more than happy to help us eat it all. So. Ah, yes, as they should. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jennifer. It was so much fun chatting with you. It was. Thank you again for having me, Carrie. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, thank you. And hopefully uh, some people out there will definitely need to check out that seating square. Mm -hmm. so. Most definitely. <laughs> well, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Carrie. Have a good one. You too. Thanks.